reddit.com slash r slash animemes. What is going on here, okay? What is going on here, guys? What is this? What is happening here, okay? You're gonna need to explain this to me. I'm gonna need to explain this to me. What is going on here? What is this, okay? You're gonna need to explain this, and by you I mean me. They never made it. They didn't make season two. But let's just go through some of these. The anime, the subtitles. Meaning, it, there's no meaning. Hey look, it's current anime. It's the current Reddit anime. Look, it's the- they're all- look. Damien, Mr. Henderson has drip. What are you talking about? Mr. Henderson doesn't have drip. Here's a picture of him. He has drip. I don't care if you have a wife and a family to feed. If you don't have sex with me now, then you're fired. Me. The hardest choices require the strongest wills. The joke here is that uh, you slash full-time introvert wants to have sex with this anime lady. And you know what? Good for them. This is a, this is a classic, strong, OL uh, archetype. OL stands for office lady archetype. She has large breasts and glasses, which in Japanese, the word for glasses is megane. Okay? So we would call this a uh, megane OL. Okay? We could even call it a uh, gyunyu megane OL, or you could call it a uh, uh, opai megane OL. Something along these lines. You could call it many different things, but the, the key point here being that this lady is talking about how he, she wants to have sex with, with you slash full-time introvert. Um, next up, what is this? Steven Universe? It's a Steven Universe meme. Um, you guys always act like you're better than me. And it's a picture of Steven from Steven Universe. And then over here, there are a bunch of characters from the anime, well, from various different shonen anime. We've got Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter, the old guy from Dragon Ball, this guy, I think he's from Seven Deadly Sins, the the guy from Assassination Classroom, I, I don't know, I think, it, this is a One Piece, probably. Uh, this, I don't know, and this is probably Naruto. Um, I, if I had to guess, I would say this guy's from Bleach, because there's no, you know, it's all the popular shonens, but uh, other than Hunter x Hunter, actually, I think that's this might be interesting to you. So I've seen Hunter x Hunter, but I haven't actually seen any of these other animes, so that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> let's keep going. This is this post is titled "That Little Space." Okay, the difference between a girlfriend and a girlfriend is that little space, friend zone. Now let's just remember this has three point nine thousand upvotes, three point nine thousand people, four thousand people almost. Let's just let's just round it up. Let's just say four thousand of your fellow human beings. These people are generally are allowed to vote. They're allowed to like you know do real real world things. Some of them I assume even have jobs. They thought this was funny enough to upvote. Let's just let's just remind you of that. Although actually, let's be honest, they're probably not allowed to vote because they're probably children. I'm not going to click any of these NSFW ones, um, but you know a lot of them are NSFW, and for good reason, because <clears throat> a lot of these animemes types they have uh, they 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 love booba. They're really into this booba concept. They're really into the concept. The anime that's when that's when there's booba. They really like this. I, oh, and look, I like, look, here's Steven from Steven's Universe. I like boobs just like you. Ew, no, go away, you creep. I like blood. Nice, me too. P and it says perfectly balanced. There's a reference to the movie Avengers Endgame, which is a Marvel movie by the Disney Corporation. So we've got a Machikado Mazoku uh, reference here. Referencing this show, um, <clears throat> and also referencing the Chainsaw Man manga. Now we've got um, Aqua. Oh, this has zero votes. So you know what? I'm just not even, not even gonna, gonna bother with it. Let's see. America made isekai before it was cool. This has 9.4 thousand upvotes. Japanese isekai. I'm an average loser transported into a JRPG full of hot cat girls and elves. And then we have, for some reason, the Steven Universe Soyjack. I don't know why the Steven Universe keeps showing up here, but American isekai. There's an Egyptian god trying to kill us. What do we do? Nuke his ass. You know, I'm not sure I understand this reference. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know what this is a reference to. Uh, so, so you know what? R slash animemes. It went over my head. It went over my head. Okay, I think we, you get the picture here, right? Like, I haven't. You know, maybe you think this is unfair. Actually, just 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 real quick, just real quick. Maybe you think this is unfair because I'm just going through the top, like the hot posts. So just real quick, I'm just gonna sort by best of all time so that you can just 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 to like you know. 
just so that we get the best, the absolute best of the best of this sub that I had to offer. So uh, this has 56.5 thousand upvotes. The answer was right there all along. Breaking news. SAO players find they can escape by saying the N-word and getting auto-banned. The joke here is that uh, video games sometimes ban you for saying the N-word. And in the, the, the anime Sword Art Online, abbreviated here to SAO, uh, people are trapped in a video game. The joke being, uh, using video game logic, saying the N-word would get you banned. Oh, there's actually a subtitle here. Reports say the first person to escape this way was a player with the username Asuna, who discovered it by accident while yelling at a merchant named Tifa. Well, uh, I know Asuna is one of the characters from the anime Sword Art Online, but it's been too long since I've seen it to remember what the context of this joke is. Uh, this says, only kings will get it. Right, so the joke here, this is about um, pornography. This is about Japanese pornography. So, in Japanese law, technically, it is illegal to make porn. However, uh, the government turns a blind eye to censored porn because the, the idea being, you can give the legal argument that no sex is actually being happen no sex is actually happening, it's all just being simulated, you know, it's all just fake because you can't actually see that the sex is happening. Now, this porn censorship law applies to um, hentai, which is the Western word for pornographic manga, uh, um, as well, and, and pornographic anime. And so, uh, various styles of censorship are employed in the creation of these comics, and, uh, well, in this case, this is about manga, so let's just say manga. Uh, uh, the three different types of censorship that are most common is pixelation, which, is emu which emulates the type of censorship used in JAV, which is Japan Adult Video, so just regular Japanese porn, pixelation. Uh, the second option is these black bars, uh, where they cover the genitalia with black bars, um, you know, to censor it. And then the third option is just not drawing it and leaving it implied, uh, where they'll, they'll like just leave a white space where a genital is supposed to be, uh, and then your brain fills in the gaps. Um, that's the, so the joke here is, what's the joke? Uh, only kings will get it. So people who jack off to hentai, we're kings, guys. We're kings, according to you slash harem underscore. We're kings for, for masturbating to Japanese porn. Um, and the joke is, these are all kinds of censorship employed in that medium. Uh, I'm not sure I, I understand why the humor is supposed to be doing. So this Spider-Man meme is normally about how, like, things are the same. I suppose the joke might be the average person who doesn't masturbate to Japanese cartoon porn doesn't know what the meaning of these uh, these different uh, censorship like they wouldn't know what it is right so so um, the joke is haha I, I'm one of those people who knows what this is referencing that they are all pointing at each other because they're all versions of the same type of thing in other words censorship of pornography okay we're gonna do one more we're gonna do one more actually I'll skip that one no you know what I won't skip that one why did I say that we're gonna, we're gonna look at this this is um, switch Chan has a question for PC summer okay this comes from you slash Meriwethery. PC, why do you look so plain? Well, you see, unlike you consoles, I can become anything I want. So tell me, Nintendo Switch, what can you do? I have Mario and Zelda. Yeah, fair enough. I can emulate those, but she's cute, so who cares? This is maybe the least funny thing I've ever seen in my life. I think the people who visit this subreddit don't deserve rights, okay? I don't think they deserve rights. I don't think that they can necessarily be considered people in the same way you and I can. What exactly is going on here? Why Why is this so bad? And this isn't like like something that is like ex exclusively bad. Like, I mean, I did, I showed you the best, the best, the most popular anime memes on reddit.com. Okay, this isn't like some rare phenomenon. I just want to indicate and r slash anime memes is just indicative of a wider trend of anime memes being exceptionally bad. Um, they are just widely regarded as being exceptionally bad. Now, I want to bring something up to you, uh, which is that anime memes actually aren't always bad. There are actually some really good ones, and there have historically been really good ones. In fact, I would argue that anime... Uh, without anime, memes wouldn't really exist in the same way. Anime memes formed the basis for meme culture as we know it, and for internet culture as we know it. So what happened? Um, uh, why, why are anime memes awful, while anime memes can actually be quite good? Uh, and the reason is very simple. It's extremely simple. 
if you think about it for more than five seconds, you will realize that anime memes could never be good. Because, because, uh, I know this is an overdone point, but this is the reason, anime is not a genre, it is a medium. There is no anime, it doesn't exist. There is no homogenous anime thing. There are various different types of anime and various different anime communities. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not, I physically can't go through all of them because there are infinite subgenres of subgenres. It's fractal like that. But uh, just for an example, uh, you could talk about shonen fans, seinen fans, and uh, uh, you know uh, the other one, shoujo fans. <laughs> uh, those are like the main sort of big three genres. Uh, there are there are, there are anime about sports. There are anime about uh, cute girls doing cute things. This is my personal preference. There are anime about uh, pretty much anything you can imagine, actually. Um, that you know, there are there are anime about pottery. There are anime about uh, and going to the moon, probably, I don't know, but uh, the point being, anime isn't a genre. There's lots of comedy, there's lots of action, there's lots of drama, there's lots of slice of life stuff, there's, 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 it's, it's as broad, it's like, it's like making a subreddit called r slash television memes. You wouldn't get good quality stuff there, because television is immensely broad, and therefore, the things that would sort of float to the top, that would become popular, would just be the same few shows that everyone's talking about. I can guarantee you, if you went on a subreddit that was called r slash television memes, you would see a lot of uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul memes, because that is th what is popular. And they wouldn't be particularly good, because there's probably already a subreddit for Breaking Bad memes where all the good ones go, uh, but the people who are on r slash television memes aren't particularly invested in Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. They just, you know, vaguely, they watch TV sometimes. And so, uh, you know, they're not, they didn't go out of their way to, to, they're not like, oh, I'm a Breaking Bad fan. I'm in the Breaking Bad fan base. I have a Discord server where we all talk about Breaking Bad. You know, I participate in the fandom and I'm going to go out of my way to find this subreddit where people post jokes about this series I like. We didn't do that. They were like, I watch TV sometimes, click, right? That's what they did. I, eh, I watch TV sometimes, I'll, I'll follow that. So the, you can imagine how the same process happens with uh, r slash animemes and anime memes in general, where uh, people who, uh, the people who end up on this subreddit are probably children or teenagers who, you know, yeah, they know about anime, they've watched a couple, you know, they watched a couple of shows, maybe they watch one show per season, one or two, or maybe, maybe more, maybe more, right? They, they watch the popular shows, they, they vaguely keep up with the discussion, they've seen Dragon Ball, they've seen Death Note, you know, and uh, they, they're not, like, super involved in the community, they, they haven't, like, they couldn't name a director other than Hayao Miyazaki or, you know, stuff like this. But like, they, you know, they, hey, I, I, yeah, anime, sure, I like anime. I've seen a couple of anime, I liked them, okay? Fuck it. I'll follow r slash anime memes. And so of course you're gonna get the most popular show of every season with the worst possible jokes. Because to most people who have only watched a slightly more anime than uh, the average person, the, I, I class this in like a few different groups, right? You have like average person, seen My Neighbor Totoro, probably, uh, maybe a, a couple other uh, Miyazaki films, um, has maybe seen the super, super popular anime like Dragon Ball, uh, Pokemon, uh, maybe Death Note, Bleach, you know, the, the ones that, that are sort of, um, well, actually, the TV anime, I guess Death Note doesn't really count because there's the TV popular anime and then there's the online popular anime like Death Note, like Tokyo Ghoul, Sword Art Online. The ones where you, you wouldn't just stumble across them on TV as a kid, you'd have to go and search them out. So someone who's seen those, uh, that's like 90% of anime fans, right? That's, uh, if you've seen those and enjoyed them, you, you would probably be fairly comfortable calling yourself an anime fan. And these popular shonen series generally 
are made for that kind of person, right? They're made, their main target audience is, you know, young teenagers uh, who uh, maybe have most of their time at school, but have fairly a lot of free time and, um, you know, aren't already super deep into the medium because it's assumed that if you're already super deep into the medium, you're already familiar with the shonen stuff uh, or you're not interested in it. Uh, because you're you're too you you're generally focused on your hyper specific little little niche of the anime sphere, um, so so that's the target audience for the sort of shows that are that we've seen here. You know we've seen what have we seen? Uh, uh, Kaguya Sama probably because uh, there's one there's one on the screen right now. Um, you, you know your, your Chainsaw Man's your Sword Art Online's these sorts of shows. Their target audience is. 14 year olds, 13 year olds who are, you know, maybe slightly familiar with some of the anime they've seen on TV growing up. Um, and if you imagine what those shows would contain if they're trying to appeal to that sort of person. Well, you know, teenagers, they love boobs. They're teenage boys specifically, actually, I should have clarified. Teenage boys. Teenage boys, if there's one thing they're famous for, it's being like, you know, fucking. Uh, anything with sex is hilarious to them. I remember, I remember being 14 and finding anything with sex really funny and epic. Like, I remember, I remember that time in my life. I remember going to school and making probably the worst jokes ever with my small friend group who where we were, hey, <laughs> boob, boobies, hey, <laughs> boobies. Like, like, you know, that's funny to, to you when you're that age. That's like important and interesting to you when you're that age because hormones or whatever, I don't know. Uh, and so, of course, these anime, trying to appeal to that sort of demographic, are going to use that sort of thing, especially with Japanese TV's uh, uh, understanding, or, or Japanese media in general. Uh, they, they sort of are okay with this. They're more okay with this than Western shows are, uh, for complicated cultural reasons. They just, they're just more okay with it. You can pick up a manga targeted at, like, 14-year-olds, and it'll have, you know, uncensored boobies in it, or at least, like... Uh, very lewd fan service -y drawings because that's what appeals to teenagers, teenage boys, and it sells, so, and there's no laws against doing it, so why not? Everyone's just sort of okay with it, and so that's of course the sort of stuff you're gonna find on a subreddit like this, is people talking about those kinds of shows, people who are the target audience for those kinds of shows, those kinds of shows know this and purposefully appeal to them with, uh, you know, the type of humour that you then see on r slash animemes. Um, what you won't find, really, is like, you might find occasional references to the good animes. Uh, you know, your, your bleaches, maybe. Your one pieces, stuff like this. But that's not why they're there. Because if you wanted to talk about bleach, or you wanted to talk about, um, did I say bleach? I meant to say berserk, pardon me. Um, your Berserks, your One Pieces, your uh, maybe Red Line shows up a lot. Uh, you know, stuff like this. Because if you wanted to talk about Berserk, you wouldn't go on r slash memes. You would be in the Berserk subreddit, which I assume... I don't know. I'm not a... I have never read Berserk. I assume that sort of place has better discussion. If you wanted to talk about whatever you, are, you actually enjoy, as I gave the example with, um, with, with Better Call Saul before, if you really were into this thing, you wouldn't be there in the first place. You wouldn't be in the, the sort of really vague, generic version of that fandom. You'd be in the specific fandom for the thing you actually care about. Um, so, of course, anime memes are dog shit. Because they're not really made by people who are into the genre, or into the medium, or into the culture. Um, when you actually go to those more specific places, uh, you get a much more tight-knit community uh, even if it's not to the point where, you know, they're all on Discord talking to each other or whatever, you have much better um, shared cultural reference points because you can, because you can get specific like that. Um, like, for example, uh, pretty much every day on 4 the 4chan board A, slash A slash, right? That's how 4chan works. Separated into different boards um, uh, for different topics. And then within those boards, you have different threads about, like, subtopics within that topic. A is the anime and manga board, uh, just for those who don't know. Uh, pretty much every day on A, there is a thread about this anime called Gotchumon wa Usagi Deska, uh, or Is the Order a Rabbit, in 
uh, English. Now, that's not a particularly recent anime. The fourth se season aired fairly recently, I think two years ago, by the way. This, this is Chino from that anime. This is the anime I'm talking about. Gotcha Yusa, for short. Uh, I like that show, as you can tell by the fact that I have a poster for it. Um, and so I will visit these threads. It has a pretty thriving fan base. Uh, and in these threads, there are various memes that stay contained within these threads on this particular website. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to say the memes are, like, the funniest thing ever, but memes are often not funny. They're mainly cultural touchstones. They're sort of centers of discussion. The main point of these threads is posting cute images of the girls in that show. Honestly speaking, they should be on the board C, which is for posting cute images of anime girls, rather than the board A. But because they're on the board A, they have a lot of discussion, and the discussion is generally very light-hearted, mostly focused on comedy, mostly focused on how cute the girls are, because hey, hold on a minute, that's what the fucking show is like! The show is that! That is an exact replication of the vibe of the show. The vibe of the show is light-hearted comedy, slow-paced, not that much happens, not that much like super in-depth drama, mostly like, you know, pulled back and focused on how cute the girls are. And it also happens to be the exact tone of the discussion. No one sat down and made it like that, but because the fans of the show are specifically going to talk about that show, they're gonna end up emulating the things they like about the show. And so the memes are generally, you know, the show itself is not laugh out loud, uh, comedy, it's not, you know, it's not supposed to be, it's not what it's trying to be. So the threads aren't focused on that sort of thing. The memes are more like, just it, just little in-joke reference cultural touchstones, little reference sound bites from the show. For example, every single thread, someone will post a picture picture of this one character from the show called Aoyama, um, and the, that character from the show has big boobs. Uh, that's like her, one of her main gimmicks. She has big boobs. It's like an r slash memes thing. Every day, someone will post in the thread a picture of that character with the big boobs and will say, Aoyama's Blue Mountains, okay? Because Aoyama, the name, translates to Blue Mountain in English, and uh, the joke being, she has big boobs. Now, that's not a particularly funny joke, and no one's there upvoting it, thinking it's really fucking funny, but it's just a little reference. The funny part comes from the fact that it's really not a super complex joke, but if someone just does it every day, that's kind of funny in itself. Um, but it's not supposed to be laugh out loud funny because it's not r slash anime memes. No one is coming to that thread specifically to post gotcha you some memes or to, to be like, haha, it'll be funny. They're coming to that thread to discuss the show in general. Um, a lot of it revolves around like in jokes that just happen because there's a thread every day. Like people misspelling one of the characters' names in increasingly surreal ways. I've seen this happen from day one, when the original poster misspelled the character's name, and people kept referencing it, and now, when people talk about that character, they just use a random string of numbers and letters, and everyone knows what's going on, and it's really fucking funny every time. To me, at least. I have autism, what can I say? Okay? It's not like masterpiece, like a comedy fucking, you know, genius or whatever, but it's the sort of thing that happened in a community when you actually have the same people every day talking to each other about the same thing, about something that they actually care about and are actually passionate about, because they had to go out of their way to be there. That's the, that's the reason why anime memes are going to be bad, because anime is not real. Anime is not a, it, 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 all anime is, is a Japanese colloquialism. It doesn't actually have any reflection on, like, a real centralized thing. In fact, that's what's so great about anime, is that it's not centralized. And that does, the more centralized you try and make it, the worse it becomes. Hence, these Reddit posts that act as a central hub for anime don't fucking work, because there is no central anime thing. It doesn't exist. There's, like, the shows that are most popular each season, but that's not the center of the fandom. In fact, when you go to the more hardcore places, forums and, and boards and stuff like that, that are, you know, the, where the more hardcore anime fans hang out, they often rarely talk about the same shows that the Redditors talk about. There might be a Chainsaw Man thread, you know, somewhere, but it's not going to be, like, way more popular than the Gotcha User thread or a thread about a show from 2007, uh, you know, or whatever. Like, the people who really care about this stuff aren't, like, just invested in the most popular thing. Obviously, the same way 
film fans don't just talk about the most popular currently airing movie. They'll talk about, you know, obscure French films from the 1950s and stuff. And the people who are like, you know, super into movies, they're, they're out here talking about stuff from, from all, every era, every genre, every country, you know. It's the same thing in anime. And I, the fact that you expect anime memes to be good, or, to, or, or that you're surprised that they're bad, like, I don't know what to tell you. Of course they're bad. Because the, the things that are in common between all anime don't exist. I mean, there's there's two things that are in common between all anime. It's made in Japan, and it's animated. That's it. Uh, uh, the the thing, what you're actually going to get is just the things that are in common with the most popular anime. And those most popular anime are shonen made for 14-year-old boys. And so, of course, the humor is the, the humor of 14-year-old boys, because that's the most popular... Right, do you get it? Have I made my fucking point? Of course, the other issue is just the format of Reddit as, and most social media. Uh, generally speaking, social media promotes lowest common denominator posts and humor and memes and so on, where whatever appeals to the broadest number of people is what gets most popular, what gets most seen. Whereas on 4chan, which is uh, a utopian place where people are free, regardless of their... Uh, <clears throat> free to be judged on the quality of what they say without upvotes and accounts and stuff like this and, and identities, uh, on 4chan... Look, I'm not here to say A is, like, the best place on the internet. A is a fucking hive of scum and villainy. It is, it is a disgusting place full of degenerates. Um, but uh, what you do find on 4chan is actual discussion, because the way 4chan works is someone makes a post. On Reddit, the OP is the content, whereas on 4chan, the OP is just the subject of the thread, and then the thread is the content. The discussion is the content. Uh, this is actually, at this point... Uh, unique on the internet, which makes me want to kill myself. Uh, it used to be that this is how all the internet was. It was mostly forums and boards and stuff like this, where the OP was just a post setting the, the tone and the theme and the discussion points, and then the content was whatever's being said in the thread. Whereas now, you've, every social media place doesn't offer you like this. You scroll, you scroll, you scroll, and you see posts. You see, uh, I'm trying to be funny. In, I have I have 240 characters and I'm going to try and make a joke and the, the comments don't matter, the discussion doesn't matter. In fact, it's weird to have a long-form discussion in the comments of a post because they're just comments now. Whereas 4chan is this like vestige of the, a time when the comments was actually called the thread and that's where the discussion happens which is the thing you're there to do on the internet you're there to actually talk to people actually make posts actually have a discussion have, and even if it's stupid and, and shitty and unfunny or boring or whatever at least something is fucking happening god um that's the fucking difference here is that there's there's one website that is made to have discussions about things, and there's another website which is made to express approval or disapproval about things. This is why the only meme that exists anymore, the mono meme, as I call it, is thing good versus thing bad. There's a million different formats of the mono meme. The main one you're probably familiar with is soy wojak versus giga chad. Uh, you know, giga chad is the thing that's good, soy wojak is the thing that's bad. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, Soy Wojak is the down vote, Giga Chad is the up vote. That's all the internet is anymore, uh, is I like thing, I don't like thing. And in fact, they don't even want you to not like thing anymore. The internet, they're trying, these digital landlords, they're trying to get rid of your capacity for hate, okay? They, they, they're constantly going on about this, about how, oh, hate, everything is bad is about hate, and yeah, they're talking about hating, like, racial groups and stuff, and that's probably bad, you probably shouldn't go around doing that, but it's, it's subtle, they're, they're really, they don't like negativity, because it doesn't sell, it doesn't create a positive environment, I don't want a fucking positive environment, I want to argue with people, I want to get mad, and I want those, I, most importantly, I want to make other people mad. I want to fucking ruin someone's day, okay? That's what the internet is for. And it still is what the internet is for. It's never not going to be what the internet is for. The difference was, back in the day, it was designed around this. And so, 
uh, everyone knew what they were getting in for, and so if someone, you know, called you a retard or whatever, you just went, heh heh, okay, fuck off, you know? Because that's what the internet's for. It's a bunch of people trying to make everyone else mad, uh, so that they can feel better about themselves. Because that's what the default human state is, when you remove all limitations of face-to-face -face interaction. That's what people actually want to do most of the time. Um, <clears throat> and so that's how it was. And then, a bunch of people who didn't really understand this in boardrooms somewhere were like, why is everyone just trying to make everyone mad all the time? We gotta get rid of all this disability. No more dislikes. No more downvotes. Nothing negative. If you say things that are too negative, if your insult is too harsh, you get banned. Like, fuck you. And that's always been the case, you know, moderation is a thing on the internet and it's not necessarily always bad. Uh, but you, the problem is, it act, this actually had the opposite effect of what they were intending. Uh, if you don't have the capacity to express your dislike in a, a way that the website is designed for, you're going to end up uh, doing things like uh, going behind the scenes and digging up dirt on people and, and stuff like this. Stuff that ruins everything. Because if you can't just be like, well this person's an idiot, I'm going to call them an idiot without the fear of getting banned, then what you're then what you're going to do is you're going to ruminate on it. You're going to think, okay, I need to have some righteous fucking anger, okay? It's not enough to just call this person an idiot because then I'll get in trouble for doing that, even if I'm using like bad language language or whatever. It's not, like, I can't just call this person a, a retard anymore without getting banned off the platform. Instead, what I have to do is prove objectively that this person is immoral. And, and so I'm going to go behind the scenes, I'm going to dig through their old posts, I'm going to, you know, bait them into saying something they don't really mean or whatever. You know, and, and then, then I will have the, the, the righteous moral judgment on my side and I can actually be mad at them. And everyone will be mad at them and won't that day be great? This is all because you took the downvote out of your website. This is all because you took away the ability for people to call each other retards. Uh, like, if, if you're on a community where that is allowed, where, where um, uh, you know, the, the first instinct of aggression is allowed, uh, then people don't do this weird shit. People don't do this weird conniving shit. Uh, no one likes it. Um, there are people who say cancel culture doesn't exist. I'm sort of on the fence. Like, I, I'm not talking about cancel culture. What I'm talking about is more like a general conniving vibe where people uh, are no longer just allowed to dislike something and call it stupid. Uh, they have to have some righteous moral reason to do so. You actually find this in media criticism a lot these days, that like YouTubers uh, can't just be like the angry video game nerd who's like, this game is fucking stupid and it, it's shitty, you know, which, you know, I don't want that forever. I'm glad that that's, that's not <laughs> all of media criticism anymore. But instead, you have people who are like, this game's stupid and immoral, right? It's, it's not just that this game is bad, but also that it's made by bad people who are evil uh, and that the things it tries to do are immoral and wrong. And this just fucked everything. Now all of media criticism is based around morality. And you've got people on Twitter who are complaining about, like, uh, any movies or whatever that present characters who, uh, you know, aren't, like, good people and aren't critiqued for that really objectively by the medium. But then, this isn't just me complaining about idiots on Twitter. There are always going to be idiots on Twitter. And you got idiots on the other side who are like, this. oh, people don't like him? I'm going to make Giga Chad edits of him with that, that, one, that one funk song. And look how cool and manly this guy is for being, being edgy and bad. Like, that's what you end up with. That's what you're going to end up with, with the reddif redditification of the internet. God, I want to fucking die. Now, none of this is to say that none of these interesting in-depth conversations happen on the internet anymore. It's just that they don't count. <laughs> they don't count anymore, and here's the reason. It's because they don't happen in public. Or if I... Okay, let me just tell you a little anecdote. Let me do a little anecdotal evidence here. Um, so, there's a YouTuber I really like. You know, you might call him my favorite YouTuber. His name is Semple Flips. Uh, he, he mainly does Mario games, uh, speedrunning, and, and stuff like this, right? Uh, now, if I want to find a place to talk about Simple Flips, love him, love him, right? I've, I've made, like, fan content for him. I am a Simple Flips fan, but I am not a part of the Simple Flips fandom because there's only two fucking places where this exists, and it's Reddit, he has a subreddit, and Discord. Now, Discord is where I just want to fucking die. All of these conversations that used to happen on forums and all of these interesting places, now I can't participate in them because I don't fucking like Discord. I don't like big Discords. There's like 
hundreds of people in the Simple Flips Discord. I don't want to have to navigate this shit. I don't want to have to navigate uh, a chat room, essentially. If you had told me back in the 2000s that the only way, like the main way to talk about to be a fan, to be in a, involved in a fan community, would be to join a chat room, I would have told you it was fucking insane. That's not what chat rooms are for. Uh, like, that's not what the format works for. I don't want... Chat rooms are for making friends and having social discussions and, and social... It's a social environment. It's like the internet version of going to the pub or something, right? Like, chat rooms are not... Or, or maybe for organising something very specific with a specific group of friends. Like, you go into a, an IRC to organise uh, playing some games with someone at a particular time. Like, hey, let's organise a pug in... In Counter Strike 1.6 or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't actually around for that era. But you'd go to to see the specific people that were in the chat room, not to have a conversation with the, about something else, <laughs> about a fan topic, right? Uh, or very rarely. Uh, like that's an insane way to do it. So if I see, oh, I have to join the Simple Flip subreddit. It's like okay, so now I have to like navigate this shit, right? I have to like there are like like I have to be a person here. I can't just lurk on a board, for example, which is what I would want to do, you know? I can't just... I, it's not really so much of an option because topics are too varied on on these Discord chats. They have, like, 50 different channels, right? And they're all talking about different shit. Like, I can't just just be like... Uh, I don't know. Like, hey, I really like this latest episode. I'm going to go to the place, right? But there's no, <clears throat> it doesn't exist. They're too big... They're too wrong, they're too social. Like, really, the fundamental problem is they require a level of closeness from me that I'm not comfortable with. I don't want to be close with these other Simple Flips fans. Not yet. Maybe in a year's time when we've all been on the same forum for, for ages and, you know, hey, we got to know each other, we see each other. Then, then we can be close. Then we can be friends or whatever. But I don't want this Discord implied closeness just off the bat. You know, that's, that's, that's fucking weird to me. I don't want to have to respect someone, some random fucking guy on a Discord server, or acknowledge their existence as a human being. I want to, you know, talk about simple flips with them. Or, you know, this applies to basically everything that has a Discord server. Like, I don't want to make friends here. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. That's supposed to be the incidental thing that happens because I just want to talk about something with people who are interested in that thing. And then incidentally, over the course of a year, I, it turns out we've become friends now. That's how I used to work. That's how I met a lot of my friends, you know? Uh, and I'm not saying it's impossible to do this on Discord. It is possible. Um, but... But it only works at a certain scale, and that scale is weird, and it, it, it's like, um, and it, it only works with certain things, like, maybe other people don't have this problem, but I just feel like it's too, like, it's, an, it's a level of closeness I'm not comfortable with, it's a level of intimacy to be in a Discord chat with someone, especially a voice channel, like, I had a really bad experience once where I joined a voice channel in a server uh, and I was like new to the server and uh, I, you know, I tried to join in their conversation and I, they just like laughed at me. They laughed me out of the building. Like they, you know, they all hated me. They were like, who the fuck is this guy? And I was like, I'm new here. I'm trying to make friends. You know, I thought this was how it was done. Apparently not. Apparently this is not how it's supposed to go. You do not go into a Discord channel as an autistic man and make a cringe joke. You will be laughed out of the building and everyone will hate you. I'm sorry, what the fuck is that about? That's supposed to be the center of fandom. If the center of fandom is not autistic people making cringe jokes, then I don't know what the fuck is. Like, I don't want to have to deal with that shit. It's all gone downhill. The internet is dead. And, and I used to think like, oh man, you, everyone else is just in the wrong places. Like, the, the, the real internet is still good. But the real internet is now no... It, it just doesn't exist, man. All of these... Like, I've just been watching it all die and burn down. And I don't even know where it is anymore. Like, I used to be like, look, you, you, you just only go on websites that have an app. Like, if you still go on website, Like, if you only go on websites that have an app, you've never actually been on the internet. Uh, and I still believe this is true. But also... Uh, a lot of these old forums and, 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 like, obscure image boards and text boards I used to go on are just dead now. Like, there's just no one there. It's, like, 
or they've just gone shut down after being around for like ten years. You know, like like the the owners are just like, look, the server costs aren't worth it. Like, I'm just gonna shut down. And honestly, it's hard to blame them. Uh, this is the problem. This is like the old. I don't know. There's no solution to this. The the wild west internet can never come back. Uh, I really wish everyone just had a personal website and everyone had RSS and it was all great. But uh, I just don't think it's ever gonna happen. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I just want. You know what I want? I want a friend group who plays Counter Strike. This is a bit of a non sequitur, but man, no one I know plays fucking Counter Strike. I play Counter Strike twenty four seven. Like that's all I do is play Counter Strike. I don't. And I want to to me and like two other friends go on CS underscore office and shoot the shit for like ten hours straight. That's what I want. That's the ideal fucking Counter Strike experience. Is office, you know, no pressure, silver. Everyone's silver, everyone's in office, no one's really trying, and we're just shooting the shit. That's what Counter-Strike is all about to me. That's what life is all about to me. And yet, I don't have a single fucking friend who plays this goddamn game, or has a computer that can run it, or whatever. It's like, I, that's not really too bad, like, I guess if you can't run it, it's not your fault. But, I don't know, man. Everyone's playing bullshit games. Everyone else plays bullshit. No one, no one plays any of the games I like. I like, like, I'm the only person who likes these games where your character doesn't get better, you get better. Like, the main two games I play these days are Trackmania and Counter-Strike, and no one I know plays them, or, you know, wants to play them, and I don't know what to fucking do. Like, it just makes my experience very lonely. It just makes my life very lonely, because all I'm doing is solo queuing, just all day, and no one wants to make friends anymore. You know, I remember, I've made multiple Counter-Strike friends. I don't talk to them anymore, but, like, over the years, over my 3,000 hours in this game, like, you know, you run across someone in a lobby, and you, you get talking, and then you get friendly in-game, and then they invite you to play the next game with them. And this happens a lot, right? This happens, like, maybe once every couple months, this sort of thing happens. You're playing Counter-Strike, this is, like, the, the best, this is one of the best things about CSGO, right? You, you're playing Counter-Strike, you're talking with someone in the lobby, you're making jokes back and forth, and then, hey, they, they you know, the game ends, and, and you go, you wanna play another? And they're like, sure. Or they go, you wanna play another? And you're like, sure. And then you invite them to a lobby. You play a couple more games together. And then you never talk to them again. But one in, you know, one in 50 of those people, the next day they message you, and you're like, hey, you wanna play? And you're like, sure. And then you made a friend. And then you play, like, every day for a while. And it's great. And then eventually you lose contact with them. Like, that's happened to me a few times, and it was great. I had someone to play with. Now, no one. No one talks anymore. No one wants to talk in the game. No one wants to queue with me. I'm lonely. I'm alone. <laughs> I'm alone in the fucking, in B tunnels. I'm, I'm just wandering B tunnels alone forever. And I have no friends, and no one ever wants to play with me. And no one ever, and I, I'm, I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm all alone, man. And that's the problem with the, with anime memes. This is all to say that the internet, honestly, it's just not a thing that can happen. Let me explain. Back in the day, there was something called the dot-com boom, uh, and the dot-com crash subsequently. Uh, I'm not going to get super into that. But uh, basically, the internet, you used to be able to run a website and make a pretty tidy profit with just, like, a banner ad in the corner. Ads were worth way more. People were massively overvaluing uh, the price of uh, or how much they were willing to pay to, to give you a banner ad. Uh, then this all crashed when people realized no one's actually clicking these ads. Um, and so, so suddenly ads had to become much bigger, much more intrusive. Um, and uh, much more importantly, they had to become personalized because uh, personalized ads get more clicks. Uh, people, you know, before the internet, you just have some random irrelevant banner ad at the top of a website, and that would pay for the website's upkeep. Nowadays, that is not the case. Uh, um, uh, one banner ad can't sustain a website. Uh, no one's paying that much. One like non-personalized banner ad is, is not doing anything. Uh, so that crashed. So then people had to figure out a new way to make money on the internet. Um, of course, they, they had to figure this out. They couldn't just 
pay for, you know, like normal people like me, you know, you want a website, you just pay a tiny bit of money a month to keep a website up. It's not a big deal. Um, but we're talking about corporations here who they love money, they're greedy. Um, they, they need to make money. That's their, their entire reason for existing. So uh, they <coughs> invented something what is known these days as the attention economy. Um, uh, you, uh, uh, you've probably heard the phrase before, if, if you don't have to pay money to use a service, then you are the product. Uh, the idea being, you generate wealth for these companies uh, by, they essentially farm you. They, they farm you. You as a person are now like livestock. You are the, the, uh, uh, what, what would I even call it? The, uh, the raw materials? No, that's not what I'm thinking. What am I, what's the fucking word? You're the product, you're the, the livestock, whatever, it doesn't, you know, the specific word doesn't matter. You, you, you are what makes the money because what they do is they track everything you do and they sell that information to governments and ad companies, uh, as well as using that information themselves to target ads at you, which those ad companies will then pay more for, Like right? Um, if you can only show an ad to people who are going to be interested in it, then, uh, the, you know, you're going to get a much more effective ad campaign. Everything's funded by ads. Um, however, uh, I say this, this is what these companies would like you to think, and this is what they would like their investors to think, and so on, but none of this is actually really true. Um, <clears throat> none of these companies really make that much money, but it's also impossible to tell. Uh, it's, all, it's all super fucking confusing, and like a weird high-level uh, economic stuff, but the way this stuff works is most of these companies don't turn a profit at least not on the books, but they, they have uh, a whole team of, uh, you know, um, financial advisors and, and whatever they're called, right, who, uh, their job is um, to, to make it seem like these companies don't turn a profit, because if you don't turn a profit, you don't have to pay taxes. So they'll have, like, three different companies, uh, like, it's like, oh, well, you know, we would have turned a profit. We, we made four billion, right? Our upkeep costs were two billion, so we would have made two billion in profit. But unfortunately, sadly for us, we had to pay. We had to buy a bunch of services from this other company, which cost us two billion. So in the end, we didn't make any profit. Except that that other company is owned by the same people, so they just paid themselves two billion and then never had to pay taxes. That's how it works. Um, so the so there's companies that don't make profit, um, and they. Don't really have a product because you're the product, but they're not act. They're not like they're only selling you to people who you never see to like these third party ad companies that you never actually uh, are in contact with. Uh, so, so the the people who are actually buying the product are these invisible forces who barely exist, and they're supposedly buying these products for like you know infinite amounts of money. Except they don't actually have infinite amounts of money. No one does. Uh, so what actually props up these companies, these social media platforms, are investors who, you know, you see everyone uses Twitter. It must be worth investing in Twitter because it's like the most popular thing in the universe. So these investors are propping up these companies. It's not just social media, but it's also um, gig economy stuff like like ride sharing apps like Uber and, and you know, d delivery apps and all of these sorts of things. They're all propped up entirely by investment capital who basically, who, uh, and uh, those guys, um, well, uh, so, you know, uh, oh, okay, well, so they must have to make a profit then because uh, their investors will pull out if they don't make a profit. Well, no one knows what companies are and aren't going to make a profit, uh, just the nature of the universe. No one knows for sure. Um, and you don't know that you aren't going to invest in a company and then 10 years down the line it will make a profit, even if it looks unprofitable from now. And there's actually been a lot of examples, especially on the internet, where stuff like that has happened. Spotify is a, is a good example of that. Um, where things don't turn a profit for years and years and years, and then suddenly everyone's uber, uber rich. Uh, so none of these investors have any fucking clue what they're doing, or maybe they know exactly what they're doing. And they don't have to make, they don't have to know what they're doing. They don't have to get a return on investment. Why? Because governments prop them up. This is what central banks do these days, is when the economy crashes, uh, because most of the economy is based around, you know, the, the biggest parts of the economy, the most profitable companies are based around 
tech products that barely exist and definitely don't generate a profit and they're definitely not taxed for it and, and everything. So, you know, when these, when large sections of the economy just crash because none of it exists, uh, the, uh, central banks just flood the, the investors with uh, money in order to prop the economy up to qualitative easing or quantitative easing. Um, uh, and so none of them ever have to make a profit. So hold on, we've got companies that don't have a product, that don't make a profit, funded entirely by investors rather than by actually selling a product or doing, you know, the stuff a company is supposed to do. Uh, they, they're propped up entirely by investors who themselves don't have to expect a return on investment because the government will bail them out if they ever get too poor. I'm sorry, what the fuck is going on? Remember the adpocalypse? I know, which one? There's been a lot. If you don't know, if you somehow live under a rock and miss this, uh, YouTube has had a few different periods where uh, there's been a big freak out among advertisers for various reasons. Normally, some big creator or something about the site being very advertiser unfriendly, uh, doing something very mean or very rude or very offensive, very bad. Um, something that would scare off advertisers. We're talking serious shit here. We're talking like like PewDiePie saying the N-word or whatever he did. And, um, you know, uh, that one guy who th th thought he found a, a secret pedophile ring in YouTube. Like, these are the sorts of things that cause the ad apocalypses. What I mean is the sort of things that are, like, not really in YouTube's control, uh, but, like, close enough that it kind of feels like it shouldn't be there, right? Like, YouTube don't veto... <laughs> PewDiePie videos when they're uploaded, right? But also, like, it kind of feels like he shouldn't be able to get away with that if you're an advertiser, you know? Or YouTube, like, the, the pedo ring never existed. Um, like, it, it was all made up by this this guy. You've probably seen the Emp Lemon video about it. Uh, uh, but, like, uh, you know, whether it did or didn't, like, it feels like that's something YouTube should be able to deal with or shouldn't be there in the first place. The sort of things that are really scary to, to brands and advertisers. And so you get these apocalypses where all the advertisers pull their ads all at once and YouTube is suddenly like, fuck, we have no money. And then they have to quickly put in something, some sort of policy to bring 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 the advertisers back on their side. Uh, now, I would be willing to bet that smaller scale, less public versions of this sort of thing that don't necessarily come all in one burst, but happen sort of on a more low key side for like corporate kind of reasons. Uh, happen all the time on all of these big social media platforms, right? This was this is what I would be willing to predict. I would be willing to predict there's an ad apocalypse once a year on every social media platform. And these social media sites then have to sort of beg the advertisers to come back. Um, uh, like, I don't know, maybe some big advertising group decides to change their strategy and we're not going to be putting as much money into Twitter advertisements anymore because we've seen that it doesn't get that many clicks on our analytics side and we've decided to pull that. Suddenly, turns out, oh shit, that's like, that's like a, a zero point, I don't know, that's like 5% of our annual revenue gone as Twitter. Shit, what do we do? We have to appease these people. Um, I'd be willing to bet like something like that happens pretty regularly and these these platforms don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it for obvious reasons. Like that's a shitty way of doing business. And so you've noticed probably that everyone wants to be Netflix now. Um, all uh, this attention economy, ad-based economy way of running a company uh, doesn't make investors very happy. Investors see this sort of shit happening and they're like, uh, any fucking second, all of these guys could pull and not come back and I would lose everything. So get your shit sorted. And so every company wants to lessen their dependence on ads. Not least because no one actually sees ads, like anyone who actually uses the internet uses an ad blocker. So, uh, you know, all of it comes from mobile ads, which are their own problem uh, with with like Apple um, instituting their, their like no mobile, they, they've had, I don't really understand it. I haven't looked super deep into it, but as far as I know, um, Apple implemented a policy to stop like cross ad tracking uh, and that like hit every app basically like every app suddenly saw their revenue massively dip um, because that cross app tracking was super important to the 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 uh, third party uh, you know people farmers uh, 
Uh, I think that's what happened. You, you don't I look into the story yourself because I don't remember the specifics. But um, everyone, no, no, uh, no one likes this. People, they're like, I remember back in the day when a business was just people paying for something. And everyone wants this to be the case again. They want to have five million users or a billion users or whatever. They want to have a hundred million people all paying five bucks a month to use their service. That's that's their ideal because it's just infinite free money. Um, they want they want a store page or something. They just want something where the people are actually paying them instead of them just having to call advertisers because the 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 shareholders don't like it and the people working at the company, they know that this is making a worse service for the end users and they know that eventually end users will go somewhere else if the service just becomes like too unusable because it's happened. I know everyone thinks that these companies are too big to fail and they probably are, but they're not too big to lay off a bunch of their employees and downsize. Uh, and no one really wants that to happen. Uh, it's it's uh, bad press at the very least. Um, so, uh, yeah, these are companies will try to move to a subscription model. Everything's a subscription model now. Everything is a tax. You pay a tax to live on your landlord's land, uh, and they farm you. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it works, apparently, these days, is uh, the internet is owned entirely by these landlords, and they farm you, and you pay a tax for the honor of being farmed. I swear to God, uh, thinking about this too long will make you suicidal, uh, so maybe don't. But... Uh, uh, at the very least, it'll make you, uh, I don't know, I can't say that on YouTube. Uh, hey, advertisers, what up? You don't even advertise on my channel. I don't even get paid to do any of this. I'm just insane. Um, so everyone's trying to move to a subscription model. The problem is, these subscription models kind of don't work. Uh, everyone thinks they should work. They're like, well, it's obvious. If everyone pays for it, then it will work. The problem is, uh, it just doesn't because most people already have like five or six subscriptions uh, like that they're paying. I don't, you know, I don't pay a subscription to anything except my VPN provider, actually. I do pay one, I pay for a VPN. Um, but I, other than my VPN provider, which is super cheap, I don't pay any subscription model, nothing. You, 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 I don't know whether you do or do not as the viewer of this channel, but a lot of people do. And especially middle-class people, are paying like five or six subscriptions to different streaming services every month. They probably have like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, uh, Disney Plus, you know, these are like, I, I think, uh, maybe HBO Max. They probably have these ones, right? Uh, they don't know how to pirate movies. They don't care enough to learn because they'll, that's not enough money for them to care. Except that eventually it is. Um, all, they, all that has to happen is a service just has to draw a tiny bit too much attention to itself and then people will actually start putting their money and it's a problem for all of them. The entire economy is fucked. What I'm trying to tell you right now is that all of these giant fucking corporations that seem to own everything and have infinite power do, but it's all built on glass stilts. None of their power is really uh, like, like proper. It's not built on like a super strong foundation. Uh, like their entire business models, as I described, is just built on this weird fucking central banking slash investor like setup uh, um, and they don't like it and we don't like it and they know we don't like it and we kind of know they don't like it um, but the, 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 the problem is there's not really any other way to do this because they're trying to transform something the internet which like on an objective face is probably you would imagine in like your super utopian view of the internet before it existed properly that like it would be very important but you might not imagine it would be super super profitable like you might imagine it will allow for free communication between people but you might not imagine that that would somehow make someone a lot of money uh and that's the case i mean if, as you can imagine that that would happen that is actually what happened uh except it's not right someone did make a lot of money a bunch of people made a shitload of money except that money kind of came from nowhere <laughs> like that's the point i'm trying to get to is that that this money, all of this money in the internet, like never really existed or was sustainable. It was kind of just people rolling the dice and getting incredibly lucky on technology that investors didn't really understand. Except now the investors, it's been around for long enough that they all understand it now. And this is why crypto was pushed so hard by these like billionaire tech guys, is because that would be a way to actually financialize the internet, to actually make everything on the internet exchanges of money. 
in other words, have you noticed that every company is trying, like every company in the world actually doesn't want to do what they're doing? Hold on, this is going to sound a little insane, but bear with me. All of these companies, uh, like the large corporations, not necessarily the tech companies, but the large corporations that you see in your daily life, let's say uh, McDonald's and Starbucks and maybe American Airlines, right? Th these are some like big, big companies you see every day that you would imagine they make billions and billions of dollars just doing what they do. Selling burgers, selling coffee, selling airplane tickets. Except this isn't how they work. You think that that's how they work, but McDonald's is actually a landlord. Starbucks is actually a bank and every airline is actually a bank. Uh, every company wants to be either a landlord or a bank or both because that is actually infinite money printing. Um, unless you're a very, very niche specific market who has a actual monopoly or, or like a close to a monopoly over a massive demographic of like an entire mode of commerce, like Steam. Valve has infinite money because they have an almost entirely, they have a monopoly over selling video games online. Um, uh, and so they have this, but most companies aren't Valve. Um, you wanna try and make yourself either a bank or a landlord because la like owning land and owning and lending money are just two of the, the most surefire ways ever to generate profit. They've always been and they will continue to be uh, for, for as, as far as I can see into the future, right? Like, um, uh, uh, you, you can look up, when I, when I said that stuff about McDonald's being a, a landlord and uh, Starbucks being a bank, I didn't make that up, by the way. I, that, that is, I didn't just pick two examples out of nowhere. Uh, you can Google it. They, they actually do this. Uh, and it's like where a big chunk of their money comes from. Uh, uh, and these tech companies and whatever, they push crypto so hard because, hey, they want to be landlords and they want to be banks. And uh, none of that works in the internet because there is no digital scarcity. Uh, um, as much as copyright law hasn't quite figured this out yet, uh, copying a file on the internet uh, doesn't, it, it takes no resources, it takes nothing, you know, it's just a, as easy as pressing one button, it takes no labor, it takes no energy, it takes no resources, right, to copy something. So there's no, so digital things aren't scarce um, in the same way physical things are, which means no one needs to borrow money because there's no, nothing expensive. And uh, there's no landlordism because the whole point of landlordism is that there's a finite amount of land. So land is always going to be valuable because there's a there's a ultimate fixed amount of land on the earth. Um, whereas that obviously doesn't exist on the Internet. The Internet can be, you know, everything's infinitely duplicable. So they super went hard on crypto stuff because and web 3.0 and a lot of them still are like you, you think it's over. But Facebook and all of these people, they're just like. I'm telling you, this is my fear, my biggest fear. I think that this Web 3.0 stuff is still going on. It's just like they figured out that it's a bad look and they're like doing it underground now. And they're, they're waiting for their chance to resurge. And when they resurge, when when Meta comes back with their like big Web, Web 3.0 thing, it's going to be too big to fail and it's going to take over all of our lives. And when, when Elon Musk pushes his big X app, this is what he's gonna, do, do you know about this? That like his plan is to make WeChat, like he just wants to make a, a American version of WeChat um, because he's a government asset. Did you, how much do you guys know about Elon Musk? Do you guys know Elon Musk is an important government asset and that his entire modus operandi is to create a, a, a government, a, a partially government owned WeChat clone for the US? Like that's why he's buying Twitter and stuff. It, yeah, it's not good, it's not good. Uh, um, anyway, uh, where was I? Yeah, none of these companies, that it, it's a fucking weird setup is what I'm trying to get at. It's a weird setup where everyone wants to be a bank and a landlord and no one can be and somehow everyone's convinced themselves that the internet is the place to make billions and billions of dollars even though on the face of it, nothing about the internet should make you that much money and it really doesn't and it just comes from investors and ad companies and those ad companies are quickly realizing that their money isn't really worth this much investment. Like the attention economy is a bubble and one day it's gonna burst. Uh, that's my theory at least. Like I don't think it's just gonna be like this forever. Uh, or at the very least, it will just very slowly decline and tech companies know this, which is why they're all switching to subscription models, except that these subscription models don't actually work if because it only works if um, 
only a few companies are doing subscription models. Imagine you're a, a regular guy and you're like, well, yeah, I can pay for Netflix. Five years ago, yeah, f sure, I'll pay for Netflix, whatever, I'll pay my subscription to Netflix. Oh, they increased the price by $1? That's fine, it's not a big deal. But now it's today. And now there's 50 different streaming companies and Netflix only has a tiny portion of the market and all of them require the same amount of um, uh, subscription model and suddenly you can't afford it. Suddenly it's actually a big cost. Five bucks a month, ten bucks a month wasn't a big deal before. But if you're getting ten bucks a month subscriptions from five different companies, then you're paying fifty bucks a month for what, right? Like these subscription models don't actually work when everyone's doing them. Hence, why they're all failing. Uh, and so the entire internet is just built on these glass stilts that, like, uh, are just bound to collapse. This entire economy is just bound to collapse. And um, and I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. Someone's that's why they're either gonna push like Web 3.0 super hard because that can, means they can be banks and landlords, which means they can make money, or something. I don't know. Like and the uh, the government steps in. I guess is the next big thing. Like the the we end up with a China style internet. The splinternet um, happens, and the splinternet's already happening. Oh, you don't know about the splinternet? The splinternet is the idea that. Uh, eventually the internet is just going to continue splitting into these like walled off chunks that don't really talk to each other that like governments are going to realize that global free communication wasn't ever really viable and they're going to start like uh, you know like you're going to have the China internet the Russia internet these are the big ones that exist right now is like China and Russia sort of have China obviously famous for having a walled garden internet but Russia also really does especially now with the war in Ukraine um, uh, the Russian walled garden internet is more intense than ever, uh, not least because a bunch of Western companies pulled out of it. Um, and you also have the split between the US and the EU with the GDPR requ uh, requirements. A lot of US companies just don't serve the EU because they don't want to comply with GDPR. Um, like, this is just going to continue happening until eventually every country just has their own fucking internet. Uh, that's the theory, anyway. Um... There, like, there will be no the internet, there will be no the global big internet, there's going to be your walled garden that you get to stay in, and that will probably be owned by one of six companies, uh, and that'll be the landlordness that they always wanted. So that's why anime memes are bad, because, what? Because, because culture is being developed in this shit show, right? What sort of culture do you expect to grow out of this insane fucking scenario I've just described to you? I've just described the most fucking insane setup for, like, uh, the the way that the, the biggest chunk of the world's economy operates. Or, like, one of the biggest chunks of the world economy operates in this insane setup that I've just described to you. What I haven't mentioned yet, or what should be implied, is that all of this is built on culture. All of these social media platforms and, and, and streaming services and, and all of this, they're selling you culture. They're selling you movies, they're selling you communication, they're selling you interaction, etc. It's all built on culture. What the fuck kind of culture do you think develops out of this landscape? Well, it's this. It's the redditification of the internet. It's this insane, fucking stupid, inane, like lowest common denominator bullshit that you have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis every second you're not watching this very YouTube channel. Uh, back in the day, there used to be something called nerd culture. In the earlier days of the internet, in the 2000s, there was something called nerd culture. Um, you know, it, it was people getting tattoos of uh, the, the, the Rebel logo from Star, Star Wars. They, they played Dungeons and Dragons occasionally. The thing is, like I said at the beginning of the video about anime memes, nerd culture doesn't make any sense because a nerd was never like a, an, an in-group around a specific thing. Nerddom was was like a vague attribute you would apply to someone. Ner so this nerd culture, or as they actually called it at the time, geek chic, uh, becoming really, really popular, um, was never super viable, or rather the people who participated in it were never the real, true, hardcore geeks, uh, you know, because those people are weird. Those people are weirdos. And when I say weirdos, I don't just mean quirky. I mean, they are, like, like, you know the way Richard Stallman is weird? Like, he says weird shit? That's the way these people are weird, right? Like, this, they're not weird in a, like, 
uh, the way you might think of a geek being weird, like her, he, he wears glasses and he, he knows a lot about Dragon Ball. No, they're weird in a Richard Stallman way. They're weird in a Terry Davis way. Like, they're weird weird. Um, like, they, the, the whole appeal of the internet was that if you were ostracized from society, you could come here and talk to your other weirdos. And I think people have forgotten that these people were fucking weirdos and they were ostracized from society for a reason, because they're fucked. Right? I'm fucked. We're fucked. We don't, we, we don't fit in for good reason. You know the way they, so, they talk about like places like Odyssey and these alternative social media platforms, Parler, you know, stuff like this, is that if you make this alternative, then the only people that go there are going to be the people who were too weird and got kicked off, who, like the, who too toxic, got kicked off the mainstream platforms. And so you end up with this just like insane Nazis on, on these platforms. That's how the internet was. It's no fucking wonder it turned into a, what it did, right? That was your main customer base, in other words. <laughs> and no one really realized it until it was too late. And then they started moderating them out. And suddenly these weirdos don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, except like Discord and shit, and then they like grew miners, and then I don't know what happens to them. Uh, like, it's not good for anyone. It's not good for anyone. But but this geek culture that existed in the early internet, that is personified, I suppose these days, you would call it Reddit culture. Uh, like redditors, it's this exact vibe of like I'm an I'm a nerd. I like comic books and Death Note, and I like Dungeons and Dragons and video games. You know, that's the sort of nerd we're talking about what we would now characterize as a Redditor. Uh, this sort of person was super cool to be at one point. Um, now, this happened for a multitude of reasons. Um, the first, uh, well, firstly it happened because a lot of it was childhood nostalgia. Um, uh, a lot of people were now like teenagers and 20-somethings who had grown up playing video games and grown up seeing anime on TV like 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 Dragon Ball and uh, similar nerdy things like comic books like the, the stuff they'd done as kids um, they realized it was like adults had to be involved in the creation of this stuff and it was kind of cool uh, and so that popularized it but the other thing the bigger thing because that's always been the case the bigger difference is that it's kind of weird like the reason that these sort of nerd culture stuff was, like it was considered weird at one point to be into them is because they're kiddie shit, right? Like comic books are written for kids. The, uh, these popular shonen anime are made for kids. Like to be into that as an adult, you have to be kind of weird. Um, um, and then the thing that happened is that uh, tech became the biggest part of the economy. And tech was the place where you went if you were weird. And suddenly all of these weirdos who liked, you know, weird shit made for children as adults suddenly had billions of dollars to influence culture and everyone was like oh if you're a weird nerd who knows how computers work you can make loads and loads of money suddenly these people are considered cool suddenly you get geek chic suddenly you get hipsters and and so on and then the rest of culture caught up and now that's culture now reddit is culture now marvel movies are culture you know these comic books you, you read as uh stuff from like the early 2000s and it's like uh you have a character who likes comic books they're considered like kind of nerdy for it it's like hey kind of nerdy the fact that you still read spider-man that's kind of weird like uh whatever and now that's culture um you you, you look at like uh oh the, the the guy makes an anime reference kind of weird like 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 no one knows that shit now you've got like giant fucking brands doing anime collaborations like you know supreme collaborating with akira and and uh everyone watches anime and and uh ev everyone watches chainsaw man and reddit x family and stuff um you know it's the case for all of this stuff all of the staples of what was geek culture in the 2000s and late 90s has become mainstream culture in the 2010s and 2020s uh you know like there's infinite examples of this uh, and it's just sad because those people who were part of that were never the real like otaku and yet there's this trickle down economics in culture that associates being a nerd with being like this redditor type of person um but these the whole point is that being like a generalized nerdy guy 
was never really a thing. Like that was just the, like being on the periphery. Because if you were actually like a super hardcore nerd, what I would call an otaku, then you were into your little niche thing and you never talked about it with anyone else who wasn't into it. Like if you were really into anime in, you know, the, the late 90s, you were watching like VHSs of, of Urusei Yatsura that had been tape traded away, tra traded around with like these tape trading clubs across the US. And you're going to these like meetups where people would do like god awful cosplay uh, and, and you had like your five anime that had been fan translated and acid, acid washed subtitles on the VHSs and all of this shit. Like that wasn't something that you carried proudly. Or if it was, no one cared about it, right? Like you were actually into this. Or if you were like actually hardcore into tabletop RPGs, then you just did that, you know? Or if you were actually like a super hardcore comic book nerd, then you weren't a comic book nerd, right? You were into your little thing. Like, I like this particular series in this particular comic book. I like Dark Horse. I like, you know, whatever. Um, uh, and then maybe you had your little insular community who also liked these things, um, or maybe you didn't. And if you did, like, that was it. There was no mainstream nerd culture, um, you know? Those sort of vague nerds were the types that we consider relatives to this day. They've always been the same people. Like, they were the people who, for whom, like, it was an identity, kind of, but also they didn't really know anything. They didn't really know their shit. They were kind of on the outside of it. They were kind of never, uh, you know what I mean, right? It's like people who consider gamer to be an identity. I'm a gamer. Like, everyone's a fucking gamer. What are you talking about? I don't know a single person who hasn't played a video game. Like, 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 gamer isn't an identity, and it never really was. It was just that there were, there were these people who had nothing else. They had no personalities, they had no friends. So they just identified themselves by the media that they really liked. Except that they weren't, like, into that media enough to, to actually be interesting, or to actually not be, be um, absorbed into the mainstream, right? Like, what I mean by that is, if you were a gamer, in the 2000s, it meant you played Call of Duty or whatever, right? There were weird art games that existed, you know? People had already made Shadow of the Colossus and Earthbound and LSD Dream Emulator and stuff. It's just, no, like, that was never the mainstream. Maybe Shadow of the Colossus was, but, like, that was never going to be the mainstream because it was too weird. It was too, too nerdy. Only the nerdy artists would ever like it until the internet came along and suddenly, like, you know, you get 50 video essays about Earthbound every day. Um, but until that was, like, the thing that everyone did, it wasn't the thing that everyone did, you know? Uh, so, so, really, when I say anime memes are bad, what it means is Reddit nerddom is bad. But what that doesn't mean is actual otakudom or actual nerddom. Actually being super passionate about your niece's interest is bad. Because that's the only, that's the real people who get shit done. That's the real people who have interesting thoughts, is these autists who, who just like are, are super into this to some random shit, you know, like, uh, that's like completely inconsequential. I believe that that is the ultimate truth of being human, that like being an autist who's like super into their really obscure little thing, despite the fact that it serves no purpose and no one else cares about it, except for a niche little group of fans, like, um, that's, that's how you transition from doing something because you don't have a personality, like, like calling yourself a gamer because you, you're not an interesting person and so you just take this thing that everyone does and, and be like, I'm the real one and I, that's my entire personality, versus if you're like, I'm super into NES JRPGs, like I've played all of them, I love them, I know everything about the behind the scenes details, you know, like that's my shit. Suddenly, this is no longer a personality replacement. That is just an actually interesting thing about you. Like, the, that you've actually taken the time and effort to do something. That's impressive. That's cool. Like, you're a person. You have a weird interest. That tells me something about you. You know, like, like oh, if you're into that, like, why? Like, how? what's the story of how you got into that? How much effort have you gone through to, to catalogue? What do you do? Like, oh, you run a wiki? Wow, that's crazy. And how do you find this out? Oh, you taught yourself Japanese so you could talk to the Japanese fan base of this obscure video game? 
wow, you played the game early because you got the Japanese release? Because Like, what? Like, that's so cool. Tell me more. Oh, this same producer from this game actually got his start on this other game, and you can see that uh, some of his style is actually in part of this game. And, oh yeah, did I mention? There's this other game that no one ever talks about that only ever had a Japanese release, and in this game, you can see this guy who would go on to work at, like, like, that's an interesting personality. Like, that's something. Not just, I'm a gamer. You know, that's what the anime memes people are. They're the, ver they're the version of that. They're like, I'm, I'm a, I love anime. What the fuck do you mean <laughs> you love anime? Like, what does that mean? That's a meaningless sentiment. If you came to me and you were like, I fucking love mid-2000s magical girl shows, I'd be like, fuck yes, tell me everything you know. But if you're like, I love anime, just, what is that? That's meaningless. It's nonsense. It's just nothing. That's the problem with anime memes, is that these people are shells. They're, they're mere shells, and they exist in a culture built on glass stilts. I'm really into this term, glass stilts. That they exist in this culture that, that is fucking vapid and exists to make money for investment companies and, and ad agencies and they entirely bought into it. And I don't fucking know. All I can do is play CS Office alone because all of my techniques to everything, every option available to me to escape this nightmare hellscape has been taken away from me. So all I can do is play CS Office alone because they've taken this all from me. See, they all speak Russian. I can't fucking be friends with them. I'm trying. But my Russian isn't the best, okay? I know like three words. I know... Yen... Uh... Yen Uh... Nope. Uh... Yen... Uh... Yen... Give me a shotgun, please. Okay, he wanted... He wanted the... The shotgun. There you go, see? It works. Okay, hello guys and welcome back to my CS underscore office tutorial. Uh, you're going to want to walk over here. Now, this is your home, okay? This is where you live now. Spam the smoke. You always want to be spamming. Oh, get the fuck out of the way. Okay, this is how you play the game. Smoke this doorway. That's step one. Spam the smoke. And throw a fire over here. And then you die through the smoke. So that's my CS office tutorial. You throw the smoke, you spam the smoke, you get shot through the smoke. Uh, if that's happening to you, you're probably playing the map correctly. Uh, what I actually did wrong there is that I was using a real gun instead of the auto shotgun. Now he's fucked up here by taking the AK. See, on most maps in the game, you want to have the AK. But CS office is different in that um, the AK is actually not any more powerful than the shotgun here. You're going to want to smoke this off and just stand here. Spam the smoke with your pistol. So what you're trying to do is just alert the enemy to your position just so they know exactly where to shoot you back. You see, you want to be standing here and just sort of staring at this wall. You're going to be intimately familiar with this painting. So did you see how I didn't actually see a single enemy that entire round? That's what you want to happen. That's what. That's how you should be playing. Uh, you don't want to be seeing enemies, because that's scary. Right, we got that guy who's... See, you see what I did there? That was a mistake. I ran out of my hiding spot instead of just standing there. You want to be standing in that corner 24-7 like a, like, a, like a sentry. Like a sentry gun. You're a turret. You're not a human being. In CS Office, you're not a human being. Accidentally thinking that you might have agency or be a human being is your first mistake on CS Office. What you actually are is a machine. A machine that watches this painting. This is actually going extremely well. And that's why you buy the auto shotgun on this map. See, it's fine. And then just let your teammates do the hard work. Take an AWP if you see it. AWPs are actually also viable on this map. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to do something inadvisable and actually hold an angle here. Oh, it's only me. And we don't actually know where the guy is. So, best thing to do here... Uh, it, not that. 
you don't want to do that. I think you've gotten the picture of how to play CS Office. 